Don't look. Don't! Stop. Please. Please! Alright, so I can't go that way. That way. Charmed, I'm sure. Forthwith. What's next? burn yourself. Come on! Basha, 
much time to save her. Yeah, where the fuck is my other fourth? Oh my god. Dude, she's. Oh, you fucking bitch. Let's cut with fire, baby. Soldier. Find a route. Even fighting. Take you. Take you. My turn. Uh. 
What's it gonna take? Wait! Oh! Wait just a tick! Killing me is a waste of time. I'll find a way to return. Always have, always will. But it's unpleasant. So how about we be civilized about this, hmm? I have something you want. To you. Don't let her take me, please. Shut it. You owe me a babe, girl. And I'll take it, whether you like it or not. Let me leave with the girl, and I'll give you power. You want to be stronger, tougher, smarter, done. Anything is possible. Just let me keep the girl and her babe. If her powers were worth anything, we wouldn't have beaten her. Finish this. It's your choice, sweetness. Not a hope. It's one or the other. Fine. Have it your way. I'll rip your throat out, yes, you little bollocks.
stupid. How could I have trusted her? I almost gave that monster my child. That's what she wanted! My baby! And God, I was going to do Dingo it! Dingo ate my baby. For him! My husband. She was going to bring him back. Bring on her back to life. Connor would have done anything to save me. I had to do the same. I just wanted everything back. Back the way it was. It's my own fault for letting her. Look. I don't like owing people. Here. This socket is worth some coin. Really? That's... My husband gave it to me. I should take him home. His coffin is just upstairs. A decent burial is the least I can give him. Thank you. Yeah, I don't think there's anyone else who would have saved me. Open up.
Alex. Didn't hear you coming. I know I should head home, but I can't bring myself to leave. The thought of putting him in a wheelbarrow and making the journey all over again. to be used. Bring it back! Bring Connor back! Please! What? What's happening? Why is he still dead? You feel something pull at you. The creature yearns for a master. What have you done to him? wand had a twist. Pity. Beyond even the power of the weave to help now. Direct me. Enough time wasted. Battle awaits. One with the weave.
Welcome back. Blood. I don't like where this is going. Whatever it was, was enthusiastic. Very much. Very much. Awesome. Welcome back.
Tastes like chicken. No chicken. Tastes like fish. Gentlemen, contain yourselves. This quarrel sells our feast. Besides, tastes like pork. And what surprise is this? Brothers, look here. I have eyed yet another tiefling prize. Fortune favors our bellies. Stranger, be you friend or food. The mark is her measure. Show us the brand of the absolute. that your meat must go unsavored. Food? Food. Not food. Friend. Am I not astonishing? A robust diet makes for a shrewd mind, you see. I... I'm a gourmand, and you, a delicacy. Were I so lucky? I've no use for the Absolute, or any god. I follow two masters only, gluttony and greed. The goblins understand my appetites. They sate my hunger for gold, and the rest sate my hunger for meat. Boss Goblin give gold, we check brand. Good deal. No talk. <laughs> I am, by all accounts, a student of higher commerce and extortion. Make me an offer. Tempt me. and a boon to my aching belly. We have a deal, my tasty kibble. Take my bone horn. One blow and the ground will quake with my family name. Use it when the need arises and never a moment before. Ogre kill everyone around, then Ogre eats them. Well spoken. Indeed. Ogre kill everyone around. We follow the scents of blood and gold to all lands fertile, friend. And this land proves particularly fruitful. We will keep close, 
When you are ready, sound the horn. Let's see. Apart from an overgrowth of moss, the well looks unremarkable. The coin disappears into the well. After a moment, you hear a soft clink, not a splash. Lost in thought. Making me sweat. Where to? Disappointing. No joy. Plans for some truly fiendish looking weapons. Our blacksmith was multi talented. These designs are unfinished. Rough drafts, no more. As you approach, a guttural scream and a succession of quick bangs rattle the door. Then, a low moan. Someone, or something, is having a bit of fun. Leave it. Whoever's inside doesn't want an audience, and I don't want to fight. Hey. 
What the hell are you doing? Puny! <laughs> I am strong! I am virile! I am a... Enough! <laughs> oh, a moment ruined! Passion squished like slow goats underfoot! Oh, we leave. Ha! Yeah, I remember their, uh, their, uh, afternoon delight, if you will. A feast fit for an ogre. You notice a peculiar dagger protruding from the tough, leathery meat. You tug at the dagger until the blade snaps in two. The sharp end is still stuck inside the meat. Sharp metal fragment pokes out of the meat. It's of no use to you. My condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. I believe you. Thank you. <sighs> Good gods. It hardly has any effect. Oh, Mistra, have mercy on us all. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. I just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am 
is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. And what one might call a wizard prodigy. Who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it. Much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself. The Lady of Mysteries. The Goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time she became my muse. And later even my lover. Oh yes. We enjoyed each other's company. Body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. Though not, I think, my methods. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. I swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. Inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess, and yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. And he almost managed, but not quite. And his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured, then shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought, until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book. A Netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? The answer was to try. And the outcome was to fail. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in, into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread mirror. A book bound and suddenly opened. Inside there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning.
This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it would level a city the size of Waterdeep. You thrice damned rotten bastard! You've been the greatest threat to our lives all this time! I swear to you I wasn't. But I've no choice but to admit I am now. Perhaps it would be best if I leave and put as much distance between us as I can before the orb erupts. My chance upon a king's collection of magical artifacts around the corner. We might cross paths with a miracle round the bend. Then again, we might not. All of this, it must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. You'd even consider letting him stay. We must be rid of this menace. I'm in two minds. And frankly, don't care a great deal. Either decision is fine by me. That is... a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me, I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. I stand at a precipice, but if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now, even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. Interesting. I travel with a ticking magical time bomb, a green woman that wants to kill all of us, and a god worshipper that will kill those that don't worship her god. Pretty good motley crew. Death around the corner. I like it. I had another dream last night. The visitor came to me and ordered me to penetrate the heart of the very cult that's spreading the infection. It gave me a tadpole gift too. Just like it did the first time it appeared. I suppose it hoped this would help. At first, I thought we should avoid these gifts no matter what advantage we gain. And yet, I can't help recall the words of my father. The best plan is the one that works. These powers could be enough to edge us towards victory. Very well. If it's mind games these parasites wish to play, we'll play and we'll win. It's said that anyone who bathes in the river of blood emerges as one born anew. It's a lot like that, I imagine. I feel the weight of these horns on my head, 
curling upwards like a mammoth's tusks. I feel these ridges snaking down my neck, not to mention a few bumps and prongs in unmentionable places. But I haven't seen my reflection just yet. Be my mirror. What do you see? I can't tell if you're being silly or serious. I'll accept the flattery either way. I suppose I'll grow used to the new me. Horns and all. The people will see a curiosity. Maybe even a beast hungry for their souls. But I will slay their monsters. Keep them safe. And one day they will see the Blade of Frontiers again. dreaming of our enigmatic visitor again. She told me our purpose was to take on this cult of the absolute, to infiltrate its ranks and bring it down from the inside. She even offered me greater powers, the result of some manipulation of the tadpole's psionic abilities. Given the magnitude of what we're up against, I see no harm in considering the benefit this offer might afford us. Could be the only way to reach this source in one piece. As existential evils go, the Absolute certainly seems an adversary worth holding in its tracks. Any opportunities for us to indulge our tadpole's capabilities are hardly on the same scale. Trifles, when one considers the bigger picture. Another dream. Another order from that dubious visitor. It announced that we will find the answers we seek in the absolute cultist's lair, and offered another generous gift. A persuasive creature. It tempts us with power, expresses its admiration, its adoration. Avert your eyes whenever it appears, and do not avail yourself of this new power, no matter how alluring. You've no idea what damage it could do to us. How far into a lithid madness it could drag us. Yes. The one truth that fell out of its cankered lips. There will come a battle. But it will be one with swords, not mind games born of brain worms. It is a certainty. I had assumed our parasites served a Geich elder, but I believe they serve a greater master still. A question that burns in my belly day and night. Elders and collectives abide by their own tenets. It would require a powerful creed to unite them. And now this voice, this creed finds our own ears if it reaches this plane it may reach others i had another visit from that dream figure i take it you did too it claims that if we infiltrate the heart of the cult that's giving out these parasites we'll find the answers we're looking for it gave me Another gift, too. Just like it did the first time it appeared. Rather generous, if you ask me. And while we're at it, we can see how many more of these little worms we can harvest. Now, was there anything else? I had another dream, which I suppose means you did as well. 
Whoever's reaching out to us truly does seem opposed to the Absolute, but wants us to embrace the Tadpole. Venture right into the heart of the cult. Perhaps we truly have a secret protector. Or we're walking into a trap. You already know my biggest secrets. What more can you ask? She took me in when no one else would. Without her, I wouldn't be alive. She's my mother. She nurtures me, cares for me, loves me. Don't believe the lies the Salunites tell. What, besides my life's calling and the greatest problem I've ever faced? Well, I like night orchids and can't swim. Is that the sort of thing you meant? It's a deal. No, I can't. Quite literally, I mean. With my memories suppressed, I can't betray Shah's secrets. And I can't remember much of myself, either. If I manage to return to Baldur's Gate and fulfill Shah's mission, then my memories will be restored. Of course. It is an act of faith, not to be undertaken lightly. Shah will reward me when I succeed. Hope you're keeping well, friend. You don't sleep well flitting between dreams and nightmares. Maybe you wake up because you know something is wrong, or maybe you just get lucky. Shit. No, no, it's not what it looks like, I swear. I, I wasn't gonna hurt you, I, I just needed, well, blood there in the dim firelight you see him for what he really is a vampire a slave to sanguine hunger i've never killed anyone well not for food i feed on animals bulls deer kobolds whatever i can get it's not enough. Not if I have to fight. I feel so... weak. If I just had a little blood, I could think clearer. Fight better. Please. A strange sensation courses through you, and your companion's mind unfolds, secrets half-revealed. Are you fucking kidding me? You feel yourself repulsed as the doors of his mind slam shut. This is not the time to start invading each other's minds. <laughs> At best, I was sure you'd say no. More likely, you'd ram a stake through my ribs. No. I needed you to trust me. And you can trust me. Because we don't have a choice. 
Not if we're going to save ourselves from these worms. I need you alive. You need me strong. Please, only be a taste, I swear. I'll be well, you'll be fine, and everything can go back to normal. Gods, I'd forgotten about your little uh, affliction. <laughs> Hunger does clown your senses. I'll go and find something on four legs to eat, I suppose. See you in the morning. You watch him stalk away, slumped, sulking, and ready to kill. No! Plus, if he did, he'd burn his face. But if he goes after Scratch, he's gone. Like, <laughs> Morning. I hope last night's little unpleasantness hasn't left a bad taste in your... Well, <laughs> I hope there are no bad feelings. Oh, I have no idea. By rights, I should be cinders in this light, but someone or something is keeping me alive. Standing in the sun, wading through a river, wandering into homes without an invitation. They're all perfectly mundane activities now. As for my other quirks, well, <laughs> we can figure those out in time. <laughs> you're such a sweetheart. I'm just glad you're being sensible about these uh, revelations. I was worried people might turn up with torches and pitchforks. Although there's still time. Well, we all have a monster inside us. Of one sort or another. For his sake, he best not develop an appetite for Gith Yankee. Quite the opposite. I'm here in the spirit of openness and honesty to work together as a team. Maybe we could get him to wear a bell, dissuade any nighttime prowling. There now. We're all friends again. Shall we go? There's a long day ahead of us. <laughs> <laughs> 